Today, we're testing everything as seen on TV. <laughs> so one of the most iconic items of all is this crank chop with this guy right here, which I'm pretty sure you guys have probably stumbled across on TV or a meme. Let's get cranky. You know this guy, right? He was everywhere at one point. But this is a manual food chopper, the crank chop. It comes with this three blade thing right here. This is the blade cover, which I'm not even exactly sure how I'm supposed to remove it. Just pull it, I guess. Oof. But it comes with this bowl and a lid that gives it power when you crank it. Whoa, did you see that? Okay, so let's try to chop some things. Close the lid and let's crank it up. One, two seconds and you're done. One, two, three seconds and you're done. Mm, I mean, it's not bad. They're pretty chunky. The more you crank, the finer it gets. It does have quite a bit of power. That's really not bad at all. I'm kind of impressed right now. Like, look at those chops. They're as good as any motorized chopper could do. I mean, obviously you do have the outliers, but for the most part, I would say they're pretty evenly chopped. The box also says that you could puree. So we're gonna try to make a tomato sauce. I got some peeled tomatoes. These tomatoes are already pretty saucy. So I'm gonna put a few of these whole ones and see if we can get it to the consistency of the sauce that came with this tomato. I feel like I should have one of those microphone things. That's <laughs> one, two, three. In three seconds. Whoa, I probably could pull it a couple more times and I feel like it would be a pretty smooth sauce. Whoa, the sauce, what? Okay, it's definitely not as smooth as this one. It's incredible. What the heck? Are as seen on TV products actually pretty good. I always thought they were kind of a gimmick because they were always so super cheesy, but color me impressed with this one right here so far. Watch to the end to see the most outrageous one of them all, but we're gonna start off strong and I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. I love it and I have a broken hand. So next up, we've got the motorized spinning mop. It's got the floor police's stamp of approval because it does the hard work for you. Ding. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot more of like spinning mops lately and I wonder if it's the knockoff of the original like this one. Ooh, two soft pads and then a scrubbing pad, which would be good for tiles. Should we try the bathroom too? This long stick. Ooh, you already have pads on here. This is the main attachment. Charge for 90 minutes before first use. Oh, and I guess this is where the solution goes. No, this is the charger button. How do you get your soap on here? So now I gotta charge it for 90 minutes. So while it's charging, let's do another gadget. Ugh. We have the tack pen. It's a nine in one pen that's supposed to be a pen, a flashlight, and a lifesaver, apparently. Oh, it's actually a lot smaller than I thought. The packaging made it look so big. Remove battery tab inside. Hold on. This is not gonna get me out of any emergency. So I'm supposed to remove the battery tab before. It comes with a battery, so that's nice. <laughs> Luckily, I always keep an extra earring in my car and let's see if this thin little thing helps remove it better. <sighs> oh, shh, Nikes. <gasps> oh, that's a really bright light. So on the top, you have the flashlight. It's actually really bright. Check it out. There's even an option to zoom in and out of it. It also has like a strobe self-defense. Like there's this ring right here, or I guess it's supposed to blind the predator. Would it really blind someone though? You also have a screwdriver, Phillips or flat. Hey, that's pretty convenient. I mean, I've never actually had to fix anything with a screwdriver on the road before. And then I'm always digging around for a pen. It's funny because it says a writing ink pen, but like what, what pen, pen doesn't, doesn't have, have ink? ink. Now the life-saving part of this pen, which I find might be pretty useful to keep in your car at all times, or in your purse maybe. I know a lot of moms tend to forget their kids in their cars. There's this little tip right here. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie! Where you're supposed to be able to smash it. Use this tip to smash the window and break out in case of an emergency. Come on, Oz. And then the last thing that this pen has, this whistle feature, where I guess if you want to call your dog back, 
Or let's say there's a predator and you wanted to get some attention. I'm just saying it might be good to have this tactile pen with you. One more thing that it should have, instead of this clip like that, I wish it was kind of more like a blade because if you're gonna have it for self-defense, you should have something that is able to cut your seat belt. It's a nine in one tool, so I guess I'll just give it a nine. And yes, it survived getting run over by my Humvee. And you're supposed to spray the pad with water or your favorite cleaner. I don't love that about it because I guess I just expect did it to already pump it into the pad. Is that how the other ones work? The more high tech ones? We're almost there with the charge. You're supposed to actually spray this with water, but I feel like that's pretty inefficient. And I have one of those squirt and mop bottles. So what I'm gonna do is just wet these pads. It's pretty absorbent. This might just change the game and I might just mop every single day. I have to say, I'm pretty excited for this, but it does take away the satisfaction of dumping out all of the gross gray water. Mopping is one of my favorite chores. Whoa! Oh my goodness. It just glides. And the rotating heads go in different directions. It's completely effortless. I do have to direct it a little bit, but sometimes with these types of pads, I feel like I'm just dragging more dirt across the floor and it's never truly clean, clean. You guys ready for the dirt reveal? It doesn't look that dirty to me. Were my floors that clean already? Originally, it already had these darker lines. I guess I won't know until I rinse this out. Okay, we do see some gray water, but it definitely is not as gross as I thought it would be. But it's just not as satisfying. But now I want to use the polishing pads to see if it really picked everything up. It does have a little more friction. Do the floors look more shiny to you guys? It does look quite shiny. I do see a little bit of dirt. If I were to use this again, I'd probably go through another clean cycle. It's definitely better than doing it manually. I'm gonna give the floor police a seven out of 10. No time for the gym. What about this compact elliptical that helps you multitask when you work? Actually, take a seat, move your feet. But as you can see, it's basically just a tiny little elliptical that you basically work your legs while sitting. It's pretty compact. Gosh, how am I gonna do this? ready to roll. It's not super heavy. I mean, I'm definitely not gonna be able to store it underneath the couch, but here you have the dials for resistance. We're gonna try easy first. It does slip and slide. Who says you can't be productive when you're scrolling? Okay, so I actually put it on the wrong setting, so it keeps sliding. Okay, the grip is much better. Ah, I wonder what middle level looks like. Okay. Once you get going, it's a little easier. This is no different than being at the gym. I'm feeling it in my leg muscles. What? Maybe I'm just really out of shape. I feel like I'm gonna be sore tomorrow. Let's try this on the highest number eight. There's a little bit more resist. Oh yeah. <laughs> Originally, I was a little <laughs> bit skeptical. When you're sitting on the couch and you're lower, it feels like a lot more of a breeze to do it because you're just like gliding, coasting. But when you're sitting on a working chair like this, I kind of feel like I have to engage my abs a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put it back down on the lower setting. Oh, so much better. I feel like I'm running a marathon. I'm gonna do a real life test and send a work email. I was planning on giving this to my mom, but the fact that it actually works and is pretty effective, I might just keep it for myself. Do I feel my heart rate going up? I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. Oh shoot, I sent this to the wrong person. Go! The thing with all of these as seen on TV gadgets is that they all require assembling. It should just be easy. But this is the sock slider. You're supposed to be able to put your socks on hands-free. <laughs> so many questions already. Open your socks like this, and then you basically attach it, and then with this foot thing, what the heck? It's being blocked by this piece right here. Roll the cuff down the sides of the cradle until the toe is at the top. It's so slippery. This thing 
hooks to this back piece right here so that you could place your foot and your heel in there and then this pushes your foot in and you can grab <sighs> oh there you go and then put it on like that help me you're also supposed to be able to take this and remove your socks too look i get it I can see someone with back issues potentially make their life a little bit easier, but I feel like it's not that easy to use. Like this slider is so wide that it barely holds on to my sock and it's slippery. There should be like some kind of grip that holds on to the sock. Well, I'm like a product designer now. I feel like I could have put on like 10 socks in that time. Pass on this sock slider and I'm gonna give it a two out of 10. There seems to be a chill in the air and you can grab your blanket to wear it like this, but then it's not as snug and your arm is left holding everything. So what if instead you got the original blanket with sleeves? This is the Snuggie. The blanket that has sleeves. Snuggie was a big deal back in the day. I went with the original blue colors because like that just brings back all the memories. I never actually had one. It used to be kind of like a joke to have one. Who's laughing now? Out, but you're supposed to be able to use the Snuggie kind of like as a robe or like if you're lying down watching TV, basically. Oh my gosh, I'm so comfortable right now. My arms are warm. There's even pockets. Wow. And it's big enough so that it wraps around your legs. I remember at like White Elephants, people used to hate the Snuggie. Like they hated getting the Snuggie. If you wanted to instead, let's say you need to go get a drink or a snack, you can wear it like this, like a robe and it drapes over too. I mean, it doesn't quite work like that. But just for comparison, imagine yourself watching TV on a cold day, right? Would you rather be like this with your arms all snuggly wuggly? Or would you rather have this where you kind of just have to keep your arms in and you're pretty much like a burrito unless it gets too hot and then you put your arms out and then your arms get cold. And then you never can have the perfect temperature. This blanket is way more plush and soft and comfortable. It barely covers my feet. I will say the Snuggie is very thin. It's like a cheap fleece. I don't feel like it would last you that long. I can see light through this. No light, soft, plush, Fleece, thin fleece, but the sleeves are cool. I may just use this as a white elephant gift this year. <laughs> this is more of a summer blanket, so I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. You've heard of beer can chicken, but have you heard of yummy can bacon? Yes, you've heard that right, yummy can bacon, where you can make yummy crispy bacon from your microwave. I swear I should be on an infomercial at this point. It's supposed to come out crispy, crunchity, just like on the stove somehow. Why is it shaped like a can? I don't know. This is supposed to help it from splattering. Wouldn't this just kind of steam your bacon? So we drape the bacon down like this, close it up with the can. I mean, there is a little vent hood right here. Wait, let me check how long does it say? Five minutes. I smell the bacon. It's ready. Okay, there is some major oil spillage on the handle, which I'm not happy about. It's definitely bubbling and steaming in there. It's hot. A gush of, whoa, whoa. I will say though, if you don't have a dishwasher, this is gonna be a to clean. Okay, look at all of this grease that fell down. That's pretty impressive. It stayed fairly clean. I'm kind of annoyed that it did splatter out, but the true test is if we have some crispity, crunchy bacon. What the heck? Look how small the bacon shrank down to. This was like a large piece too. It's, it's crispy on the edges, but it's kind of chewy as you get towards the middle. And I honestly, don't like my bacon chewy like this. I guess I can microwave it less to save time and to avoid overcooking it, but I don't know. This wasn't overcooked. It was just cardboardy. I'm gonna give this five out of 10. And now what I consider probably the most iconic as seen on TV gadget. Honey, turn off the light. The Clapper, the original home automation. I remember seeing these commercials and it always intrigued me. So you're supposed to plug your lamp into this and clap on, clap off. Okay, so your original lamp socket goes in here and then this goes into the main outlet. 
well, I gotta make room for it now. So I have it on the high setting, which I'm not really sure what that does. Okay, so now it's just blinking. Connect your appliance, then activate each one with two. This one's a two clapper and this one's a three clapper. So I'm putting it into the two clapper. And then the lights do this weird thing. Okay, I can adjust it at the bottom for a higher or a... Okay, oh, wait, what was that? I touched something and it turned on. <gasps> oh my God, did you guys see that? <laughs> wait, we gotta do this correctly how you would normally use it. from my couch again. Ah, but I'm gonna turn it now. But before I do, I'm gonna give it a... Eight out of 10. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.